The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same, will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Pastor Kathy and Pastor Paul and members and friends of Bethany, what a delight and honor for me to be here with you all today. Thank you so very much for invite, inviting me. I'm hoping that after I leave, and you ask Pastor Kathy and Pastor Paul, who was that chap that came? You all, yeah. And uh, I, I, I can't resist this. This is the last service. I understand we can go as long as you like. So, <laughs> because we, you all have those kinds of stoves and microwaves that know how to behave if you don't turn up spot on time, right? So, okay. But uh, I understand your name is Bill, sir. The reader. I thought it was so lovely I mean, when he was reading with such feeling my late uh, English literature teacher Ivy Lunk, devout lay Catholic woman, uh, she would tell us now you watch, listen to Bill Hobby read with such feeling because uh, when we read Othello and The Tempest she expected us to express ourselves and she had a marvelous way of telling us when we were wrong. She never said, you, you, you're wrong, or that's, that's not correct. She had a marvelous way. And I'm sure you had teachers that did this in grammar school, right? She would say, now, gentlemen, we were all boys at that time. The school was founded in 1844 for uh, planters, children who couldn't get to Eton and Harrow in England. So Queen's College was founded in 1844. And up until the 1970s, early 70s, it was all boys. There was a girl's equivalent as well. And Miss Lunk would tell us when we were off, not by, you're wrong. You didn't get Othello correctly or Shakespeare, she would say. Now, gentlemen, I think we have a howler here. <laughs> would you like, I'm sure your teachers never glared at you and to tell you, they told you very nice things when you were wrong, right? Okay. We can talk about that after service. <laughs> The Gospel text for today is part of the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew's Gospel. <coughs> Excuse me. Somebody must be calling my name. That's a cultural thing. Yeah. <laughs> we are living in times when some of the challenges we face today in our world are seen as new and unprecedented that we have never been down this road before. There is a striking contrast between the exuberance and celebration of some and the dismay and fear of others in relation to the unfolding of events 
which are impacting and will impact our lives at various levels. Personal, local, regional, national and global. This contrast is not a new phenomenon. For history is filled with examples of such mixed and opposing views of viewing events in the world. The power of this contrast is seen in the reality of the identity crisis which many are constant, consequently experiencing, both winners and losers. For both winners and losers, the unexpected turn of events touches the core of who they are. They have to rethink who they are and therefore how they are to act in the world. What was assumed and taken for granted is no longer the prevailing state of affairs. When winners and losers view, viewed dualistically, including and especially in terms of good and evil, the reality of life in community, of mutuality, is threatened. Given this reality, we come to the gospel text for today, Matthew 5, 13 to 20, in which Jesus declared to his disciples, you are the light of the world. We cannot but notice here in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew's gospel, it is the disciples who are declared to be the light of the world. It is not a self-serving declaration on the part of the disciples. Moreover, this declaration contrasts with what we read in the Gospel of John. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever comes Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Then the Pharisees said to him, You are testifying on your own behalf. Your testimony is not valid. Do the two texts expose a contradiction in Jesus' declarations? If there is a contradiction between the two statements from the lips of Jesus, are we to accept one as true and the other as untrue? For example, should we take the declaration in John's Gospel as the true testimony as it speaks of Jesus saying that he is the light of the world vis-a-vis -vis the account in Matthew's Gospel where it is the disciples whom Jesus declares to be the light of the world. Let me say without hesitation, both statements are true. This means that since the disciples are the light of the world, Christians, and that includes you and me, are given a peculiar identity on account of our relationship to Jesus Christ. Trusting in Jesus Christ, in whose death we have been baptized, and raised to new life in him who was raised from death, we point not to ourselves, but to Jesus, the Christ, who gave his life for the world. Thus the disciples then and down through the centuries to our day and into the future, those who trust in Jesus Christ for life, forgiveness, hope, freedom from sin, death and the devil are called to a way of being in the world 
that points not to themselves, not to ourselves, but to Jesus Christ, who alone is Lord. To be the light of the world, which has been from its creation and continues to be diverse, means that there is no one way of being a follower of Jesus. On the contrary, inevitably, we must speak of a diversity of ways in which the followers of Jesus will show themselves to be the light of the world. What would it be and is to be unmistakably common and is not to be compromised is the truth that the followers of Jesus are not calling attention to themselves and in vain using Jesus' name for self-aggrandizement and self-promotion. That would be to practice idolatry, placing ourselves in the place of God, who alone is the source of life, healing, and forgiveness. The new identity in being the light of the world, which Jesus confers on his disciples, and that is our identity as well, is a call to participate in God's mission today as the Spirit of God empowers and leads us. In Jesus' name, we are called to bear witness to him, inviting others to believe in him and join in the company of witnesses to him in word and deed. In God's mission, in the name of Jesus, no act of faithful witness and service is so small and insignificant to be despised and ignored among the people of God who bear the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The words of Portia in Shakespeare, Merchant of Venice, come to mind. That light we see is burning in my hall. How far that little candle throws its beams. So shines a good deed in a naughty world. In God's mission, in the name of Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit, there are times when the call is to be bold and humble in pursuing what is presumptuous and mind-boggling in scope for the sake of the meek, the suffering, the lowly, and yes, even for the sake of those in high places. We are not called to write off anyone from God's mission of compassion, inclusion, forgiveness, and freedom. Sisters and brothers in Christ, as we ponder today Jesus' words, you are the light of the world. We pause and listen to Jesus' closing words of commission and promise in Matthew's Gospel. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always 
to the end of the age. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord.